Wickenburg, Arizona, where the Old West meets the New West, a town that was founded on there's gold in them hills has quite the past. That past has merged into a paranormal present, spiritual energy, phantom apparitions, things that go bump in the night. This old western town is supercharged for supernatural activity. Things fall off the shelves and things get moved and I hear things all the time. And, and I heard a voice say to me one time, I can see you. There is a room back there that has mean energy in it. All of a sudden we could hear the squeaky wheel, like on a gurney coming down. It sounded like it was right behind that wall, just going down. <laughs> There's plenty of ghosts to go Are around. Going yes. here? It's still early. This is so scary. It's literally freezing in here. Paranormal. Get out of here. Are you serious? To get a good idea why this town is so paranormal, we first need to take a trip to the past. Back in 1863, gold was discovered just outside of town at a place that became known as a vulture mine. And any time the word gold is shouted from the hilltops, you soon have all the men, prospectors, and miners clamoring around to get their, their fair share as well. And that's exactly what happened here. At any one given time, there were up to 5,000 souls outside working that hard rock mine, many of them making quite good for themselves. And as it would turn out, many of them wanted to stay in our area. It was an immigrant named Henry Wickenburg who struck it rich at the Vulture Mine, digging up tens of millions of dollars worth of gold from what turned out to be the richest mine in Arizona. He ended up establishing a town bearing his name, Wickenburg, born in 1863. And like many places out west, the law was loose and fast frontier justice. Besides train and stage robbers, settlers in the U.S. Cavalry had to deal with deadly skirmishes in the Indian Wars, and many lives were lost when the Hacienda River Dam failed. Wickenburg, the largest brig of them all, was never notified. So, wouldn't you know, that at 4 o'clock in the morning, that dam burst forth so the it came ripping and tearing and taking everything out in its wake. All of the buggies and animals, and when it reached Wickenburg and below, all of the men and the women and the children perished. It's no wonder with such a turbulent past, this town is haunted. So the unexplained case's posse saddled up again and rode into Wickenburg to seek out those spirits. Yours truly. My 15-year-old twins, yeah, those trailblazing teens, Gracie and Caroline, my Gen Z ghost hunters. As always, my buddy, executive producer Rick Garner, and our guest investigators, Jimmy Vike and Laura Davis from the Phoenix, Arizona Paranormal Society. Our first stop, this place with a sinister past. Well, we're now standing in front of the famous Texas Hotel. This was indeed the t famous Texas Hotel where one of our more infamous villains used to find his victims while he lived here. None other than Dr. Pearson. He came out west, always going from town to town, leaving death and destruction behind him all across the west. When he got up to the vulture mine area, there was at least 18 bodies that became rather evident before once again he moved on. Old Dr. Pearson got into cahoots with the hotel's owner and they cooked up a scheme to poison guests and steal their stuff. A note would be sent to the doctor and he'd say something like, I've got a live one here. And the doctor come calling, take him out for dinner and drinks, and of course poison him quite handily as they went along. By the end of the night, they'd no longer be alive. <laughs> so it's easy to see why the Texas Hotel is said to be haunted. The hotel is now Antiques and Artisans Emporium. Its current owner, well, it's Beth Gallant. She told us a few tall tales about the ghosts who supposedly roam her shop. Things fall off the shelves and things get moved and I hear things all the time. and. And I heard a voice say to me one time, I can see you. Oh, and then um, I was here one night and it sounded like one corner to the other. I got a golf ball on wood. Well, upstairs is carpeted and it's not wasn't on the roof. So mm -hmm. I said, okay. Most of the activity is said to happen in the upstairs of the shop. And apparently, yes, apparently one of Beth's customers talks with a couple of ghostly characters too. So Allison lives upstairs, and she won't leave because she likes it here. She worked here back in the day, and she doesn't want to leave. 
And then now she has a little girl up there who's driving her nuts because she won't leave her alone. She, Allison says she just has no time for herself anymore as the little girl clings to her. Little girl won't leave because she's afraid of the angels. No one knows who Allison and the little girl are and why they're haunting the building. Apparently, they are most often heard, though, in the boot room. It was a place that certainly caused a fright for Caroline. That room terrifies me way more than it. It just feels very, it makes me feel vulnerable, I guess, as compared to these. Okay. Like this room, I already felt vulnerable, but that room really, like I really know it. The only way to find out who or what haunts the old Texas hotel is to investigate. So Laura and Jamie busted out an arsenal of high-tech ghost hunting gear to get us some answers. One of those devices, it measures changes in the electromagnetic field, a possible sign of spirits. So this is a REM pod, and we're going to leave it in this room. This is a, a very active room. Uh, it goes off. There's an antenna here, so it creates a bubble of energy that when it's broken, these lights will go. Okay. So I'm going to leave it in this room while we're in another room. So we're, if we're in another room when we hear the... The alarms go off, then we can kind of come in here real quick. And Along with the REM pod, Jamie and Laura also used a K2 meter. The theory is that it also measures changes in the electromagnetic field. Fluctuations could mean that the spirits are using energy to try and manifest. Plus, they used a digital recorder, and we did also. It picks up disembodied voices. The twins, along with Jamie and Laura, hope to do just that. Hello? Allison, are you in here? I just heard something fall, and I'm not sure if you did it, but if you did, can you, can you tell me? <laughs> did anyone hear that? Hear what? What, that's him turning on something? No. Hear what? No one else heard that? No, what? No, something just fell. And I was already sitting on the floor. The stairs, walking down the stairs. No, 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 something fell. Like from? Oh, God, I wasn't recording. On the... Oh, are you? Oh, my. Okay. Okay. Do you want to try and like. No, I want to talk to that Allison. I mean, do you want to use this? None of you heard. God, none of you heard that. No. <sighs> no, that's literally nothing was heard. It was a really soft sound. Like distinct? But, oh yeah, it was right, okay. You know, I definitely feel that you're here right now. I can, I can feel your energy. And for some reason, I, I feel a bit of pain. Did someone hurt you? I think I had a dream last night with you in it. Oh God. I think I had a dream with you in it last night. And I think, I just, I'm just curious, were you trying to talk to me? And so you're, you're feeling, what are you, what are you feeling um, here? There's a lot of ambient energy on the whole floor, but I feel like in, in certain areas there's been some traveling thicker energies. It just kind of is moving around with us. And you heard some voices maybe? And I've maybe. heard some whispering, which I'll check later on my recorder, I've been marking it. So, we'll see if there's anything, but I think I'm hearing some female and male voices they know we're here speaking of energy the boot room is said to be one of the most active spots in the upstairs of the old texas hotel caroline seemed to feel that because i because you guys have ghost hunted before you guys know i guess you guys are not used to it but like you guys are okay with like that feeling but mm -hmm. i've never felt that so it's just very unsettling to reach out to the ghosts jamie and laura use another piece of equipment it's called a spirit box it is a device that scans radio frequencies with the idea that spirits can communicate through the white noise. In the boot room, a spirit with an apparent potty mouth makes themselves known. Didn't yeah, sound like a good person. Did you hear that? It sounded like, what the hell? Is that what it said? That sounded like, sounded like it said, what the hell? Yeah. Oh. Are you there? Oh, what the? Maybe what the hell are you, I am yeah. here. <laughs> What, what are you talking that? about? I am the one that's doing this. Putting that on my chair for could be wrong, but I swear to God yeah, that's what I said. Gracie had mentioned hearing something drop and hit the floor upstairs. To figure out what was going on, we decided to set up some cameras to roll when nobody was in the building, and we did capture lots of strange sounds.
Was that Allison or the little girl trying to let us know they've never left this world? It is impossible to tell. But is the old Texas hotel really haunted? Laura believes it could yeah, be. The first building was more active. You know, that happens a lot when you're investigating. Somebody picks up on one thing and another investigator picks up on something else. So for me, the first building was more active physically, energy levels, uh, disembodied voices. But I think overall, I think we probably picked up some good evidence tonight. Our next stop, just across the road at Cactus Maddie's Mercantile, another Wickenburg business that has a supposed deadly past. It was the quarters for a cavalry captain and his wife and young children. After he died in the Indian Wars, the mother allegedly did the unthinkable. So on the day that they were going to be coming for the boxes and to take her over to the church house, she finally had had enough and she broke. She took a knife and she killed the three children right on the floor inside the back of the building here, which was the captain's quarters. Then she ran out into the night and kept running. No one knew anything that had happened. Legend has it, a small child, maybe one of the ones who were murdered, haunts the building. So we asked the store's current owner, Bob Fuller. Uh, we hear the ball bouncing that uh, Mariah was talking about as far as playing jacks. Uh, we'll hear it coming from different places in the store. And yeah, things will get moved. So we broke out the ghost hunting gear again to investigate Cactus Maddie's for spirits. This time though, we use another piece of equipment called an ovulus. It has a word bank with the theory being a ghost can use its words to communicate. Well, that ovulus was very busy saying words to the team. Oh, what, what is, is that? Cesium. 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 Anyone, anyone know what that means? What is cesium? Is that, oh, is that like I guess mining? that's like an element or something. Is that like a mining thing? I'm not sure, but it has a stronger bar on it. So. Aunt. Like, like a grand? Like, yeah, not uncle, but aunt. Oh. Are you somebody's aunt or aunt? Are you 15? Oh, God. What? Well, no, that just kind of freaked me out. Oh. 15 what? Well, it's freaking me out because we're 15, so it's freaked me out. I thought maybe it was something. Oh, wait, we are. Oh. We are 15. That's, well, that's, are, uh, in my mind, I was about ready to ask. So that's why I said, oh, God. I was about ready to so, ask about the twins. I kind of forgot that. In my mind, well, then it said 15. 15 last yeah, week. they just... Such. We, it's, it's such such a simple word. Yeah. But we hardly ever get such. Really? And it's got a high energy on it. So I don't know what that could mean. Can you go in the other room and touch or kick that box that's on the floor? In the the business. Business comes up quite a bit. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. But still, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything because we are in a business. Yeah. Such a, a place of business. Random group of words right now. They usually are. Is it okay? You just have to piece them together, see if they make sense. So who or what was trying to get the girls' attention? The next response, it sent shivers up our spines. Paranormal. Get out of here. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. uh, Can you see that? I was gonna um yeah. Yeah, you can see it. Also, you hear him say You it, so. are kidding me. How often does that come up? Not very often. you think that would be the topper. Well, you'd be wrong. According to Jamie, what happened next with Caroline using the ovulus was jaw-dropping. I said, is anyone here with us? And then it interrupted and said, for me. All right. Okay. Know, this, is a, this is a uh, groundbreaking moment. This, this has never come up before. Really? Yeah. I don't know if you can see that with your camera. Look, Look at the bar on the bottom. That's it's okay. all the way to the right. No, that's yeah, and it has two words on there. It never comes with two words. Doesn't really? Not, really? Wow! I feel special. You know, I'm sure this isn't paranormal. That's crazy. But I feel that is wow. really incredible. Really? So what do you think is going on back here? Just there's something here. The spirit continued to reach out to Caroline. Men. men. I said, does anyone want to talk? And I said, men. Well, maybe there's men in here. Woo. What, say right. what? You know, like you what men want to try and talk. Men? Ooh. Oh, it's a property. Okay, <laughs> they're on their, we're on their property. Yeah. So, so what, the so, REM, REM pod was going off in that closet back there, yeah. and the battery's now dead. Okay. Is it really? Yeah. You tell her what, about the, what, the, the thing on your... Whose property are we on? The obelus just said for me, one word, all the energy bar all the way across. Who's Two words, property? for Someone's me. Property? Wow. While that obelus was popping, so were the digital audio recorders. 
Lauren Jamie captured some good evidence of a possible ghost trying to communicate to the team. Ooh. Help me. Oh, yeah. my, that's so oh. That's not even what I was looking for. Yeah, but you were looking for something else and then that came across. Oh, okay. Is it help? What is that? And just like the Texas Hotel, we also used static night shot cameras and let them roll when nobody was inside the building. We got much of the same result. Check it out. Big question we all want answered, of course, is this place haunted? This is what Jamie thinks. First impression, I, I would say probably the second building we were in. It's probably the most active that we were in. Um, not, to, not to say that it might get more EVPs here or the first place, it's kind of hard to tell, but just the feeling that you got the second place, I think we heard more disembodied voices in there. So that kind of tells me that there's probably more activity. While Cactus Maddie's was supercharged with spiritual energy, the same could be said about the old doctor's office, which happened to be our next stop on our paranormal tour of Wickenburg. For the most part of the hospital was used for the miners and the ranchers and that. There was always accidents happening out at the mine. And the building right next door to the hospital happens to be where the doctor's office was located. He saw many a grisly thing. One night, a young boy was rushed in after having been crushed in a bunch of the machinery out there at the vulture mine itself. Those great big huge wheels that were used to create energy pulled him right into their wheel, crushing just about every bone in his body. No one could even believe that he was still alive. That miner eventually dies, and today where he perished, it is a state farm insurance agency. Yeah, I'm not kidding. An insurance agency. Employees say it's a haven for the paranormal, so much so, they won't stick around after dark. Uh, a co-worker and I were sitting in the kitchen having lunch, just talking, and then uh, we heard this noise. It was like a squeaky wheel, like on a gurney, like you'd hear it, you know, going down the hall or something. We heard it, and we stopped, and we come around the corner to look. There was nothing there. Jimmy Renoff has worked here at State Farm for the last 14 years. She says she's experienced lots of paranormal activity. And I was sitting at the one corner desk and <laughs> it felt kind of weird, but I didn't pay no attention to it. But then all of the machines, one at a time, started going off all the way around the room until it got to my desk and then I went outside because <laughs> it scared me. J.D. Johnson owns the State Farm Agency. He's felt cold chills and spirits since moving into the building. The cellar, there's a concrete cellar that's underneath the floor. Um, there used to be a trap door that you could open it up and uh, walk down into this cellar area. Um, but I, I, as I said, I had no use for it, so I filled it in. But it's, uh, I've heard that that's where the doctor would put the, any dead body waiting for the uh, undertaker to come. Nancy Ramos says doors fly open on a cabinet in the back room. It's so bad, they tape them shut. But it's some strange shadows. Yeah, something she experienced scared her too. And I'm usually turned the opposite way to um, doing my work. And so when so I can usually tell when somebody comes up behind me. And that particular day, I was just looking at the, uh, like, out of the corner of my eye, I thought somebody was standing behind me. So I glanced over at the phone, and it looked like there was, you know, a something sh like somebody a, a, a shadow of something so as if you can see it kind of does give you that that image and I, I turned around and I looked and everybody was in their desk at their desk sitting down so it was impossible for somebody to be behind me in the moment that I turned <laughs> and uh, me to s at least still see them walking away but no it was there's nobody there and everybody looked at me weird because they're like, what? And I was like, oh, you will not believe. I think, I swear there was somebody behind me. It's pretty obvious the staff are a little spooked by those spirits. 
So we set up our equipment inside the old doctor's office to investigate the paranormal activity going on there, and boy, it went crazy right away. There's a lot of natural EMF in the air, like a lot of equipment that can make it go up too. But at this point, I can't tell if it's natural or spiritual. Does it, does it normally go this crazy like that? Yeah, or? No. In addition to the REM pod, the PAPS team fired up another piece of paranormal gear. It's that thing right there. Yeah, it measures changes in the atmosphere inside the building. So this is another piece of equipment we have to talk about. This is called the Eddy. <laughs> So the Eddie, same thing, it detects the temperature, 66.6. Right. <laughs> and then on the bottom here where that orange light is, uh -huh. detects vibration. Oh, okay. okay. And then up here at the top, there will be, or right here where my finger is, right there is blue lights. Uh -huh. And that's also an EMF detector. Oh, okay. So those might flash if there's some spiritual I got energy you. Okay. Around. Apparently, yeah, the ghost trying to use all that energy was having an effect on my equipment, too. Oh, look at that. That... Went from a fully charged battery down to a quarter. Oh, wait, so did mine. Yep, drained right so down to a quarter of a battery. This was completely full. Just like over Cactus Maddie's, we tracked several light anomalies shooting across the screen. These spherical balls of apparent energy popped up on camera multiple times. Is it a ghost or spirit? That's up for debate. We tried to debunk these orbs as dust, but the pattern of movement seems to indicate they are some kind of ball of energy. They're neither bugs or dust. Yeah, something pretty unexplained. The visual evidence captured was yet again compelling, but it was the words from that ovulus that really helped connect us with the other side. Yeah, remember where we are. This is the old doctor's office. The hospital, it was right next door. Bones. Bones? Bones. We shut every computer off. So that should good be good. I don't remember saying Entire bones? Wait, what does it say? Bones and entire. Well, the bones were like... Buried here. Yeah. To like build the That's right. They, they did leave... Uh, houses houses, houses were built on top of the There's cemetery over yeah. here. Are your bones buried on this location? On this property? Jim, as in J I M Jim, not not a fitness gym. Enough. Oh. Enough what? Talking to you? Yeah, pretty crazy, right? Other words we got from the ovulus: store, human, story, and light. And if you look carefully, you can see a light anomaly. Yeah, coming from the ovulus. Could this be a ghost using the energy from the device to try and manifest right before our eyes? Well, the atmosphere was certainly ripe for activity. So Jamie and Laura turned on their spirit box and reached out to the other side. While they let that white noise play, hoping to hear a word or two to answer their questions about who or what was in the room with us, the camera captured another series of those light anomalies zipping across the room. One of these giant orbs zooming right past Jamie's face. And when the ovulus started sounding off again, the string of words that were put together were chilling. Let me ask you some questions. Bible. Oh. 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 <laughs> yeah, I am not kind Yes or no, do you want a Bible? These circular forms of energy stayed in the room with us as we continued to get responses related to Christianity. What it said something else. It was thurifer. Thurifer? No, like thurifer, like T-H-U-R-I-F-E-R. Thurifer. Yeah. Thurifer. Thurifer. Yeah. Well, 
Episcopal Church. Oh. A server or acolyte who carries and swings the thurible. I thought the acolyte So a thurible has the thur thurible. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Oh. And of course, we had Bible. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, yeah. Let's it's a Bible mom. Okay, that's really random, man. That is like really random. I'm going to say something right now. Oh, it's, no. It makes a little bit of sense. Because um, we play Christian music in here all day long. Mm. And if we don't play the Christian music, it's really active. But when we play the Christian music, it calms it down. And after we cleared out the building, we decided to leave a couple of cameras running in hopes of catching more strange activity. And it definitely got loud. So is the doctor still accepting ghostly patients? Or are the phantoms looking for a life insurance policy? Yeah, it's a little late for that, guys. Well, all joking aside, it seems like the old building is still buzzing with spiritual activity. Wickenburg, an Arizona town with a rich Wild West history and some real ghost stories, too. During our investigation, we captured phantom sounds, light anomalies, and spirit energy with apparent messages from the dead. I think from our time investigating Wickenburg, it's safe to say this southwestern town is haunted. For Unexplained Cases, I'm Daryl Dina.